Hello, my name is Jimmy, and today we're going to talk about powertrain. There's a lot of different engine choices in today's world, so let's just dive into it. On one side, we have internal combustion engines, like a gasoline or diesel engine, just standard vehicles. And on the other side, we have electrical vehicles, like a Tesla or Nissan Leaf. Those, well, they are basically on the ends. There's a lot of stuff in the middle, and that's mainly what we're going to focus on today. So let's dive right in the center. Hybrids. Hybrids blend the two pretty well, I would say. You got gasoline engines and a small electrical motor and battery to help with efficiency. It helps with propulsion as well. It does help with acceleration and maintaining speed. Most common hybrid vehicle that you see, the Prius, for example, a standard hybrid vehicle, and Toyota has a lot of them. In fact, the brand new Sienna, that's a hybrid vehicle as well. The van has lost a V6 in replacement for four-cylinder hybrid system. And that seems to be where Toyota is going. A hybrid powertrain is actually very efficient. The battery itself is relatively small. The motors that are on it is small enough to be lightweight, but still help you with overall efficiency. But between hybrids and regular internal combustion engine, there's actually ones that's called mild hybrid technology. There's a few vehicles that uses this technology. Um, some notable ones, the Ram 1500 has an e-torque system in the Pentastar V6, as well as that Hemi V8. You can get the same in like the Jeep Wrangler and a lot of their other FCA products. The Land Rover Evoque has a mild hybrid technology, as well as Mercedes. The EQ system is also a mild hybrid technology. It's generally a 48 volt system, which sometimes can propel the vehicle. It's designed to drive the accessory belt, which in turn helps with potentially torque, like in the Pentastar V6, as well as the Hemi V8, as well as maybe driving some vehicle functions, like in the Mercedes GLE 450, got a review of that, and you can check that out, and that drives the suspension system. So the benefit of the mild hybrid technology is, well, it's relatively simple. There's not a lot of components to it, and it's generally a lot more compact, because the battery size is smaller than that of a traditional hybrid vehicle. And then there's the other side, between hybrid and full electric vehicles, which are known as plug-in hybrid electrical vehicles, or PHEV for short. Some notable ones are the Mitsubishi Outlander, for example, Honda Clarity, and that brand new RAV4 Prime. There's a fundamental flaw with PHEV vehicles, because in order for it to have a decent electrical range, it has to have a good battery size, but it still needs that internal combustion engine. So the biggest downfall here is you're carrying around two different types of propulsion system, a uh, full internal combustion engine, so an engine, gearbox, gas tank, as well as a full electric vehicle's propulsion system, the motors, as well as the batteries. And because of that, generally speaking, PHEV is heavier, but the biggest benefit you can plug it in whenever you need, so you can have it on pure electrical range. The Clarity, for example, runs on 48 miles before losing charge. The RAV4 Prime, 42 miles. So the distance, yes, is shorter than that of a pure EV, but when you run out of range, you don't have to be searching for a plug. The internal combustion engine turns on, and well, it's just like a regular hybrid vehicle. It drives like a regular car. So there's no range anxiety there. And that's probably the best part about PHEVs. And then of course, the full electric vehicles, which they're great, instant torque, e-golf, Teslas, they're just amazing vehicles overall. But you do have to face the range anxiety. Yes, electrical systems are better now, they're more efficient, and there's a lot more charge plugs. But for some, like here, where I live in Burnaby, there isn't a plug that close to my home. So I actually have to travel a little bit before I'm able to charge a vehicle. And those spots are very commonly known. So, well, they're generally taken up by other vehicles. So in conclusion, what's best for you? But that's hard to say without knowing your needs. A uh, hybrid vehicle is probably the most efficient in terms of cost-wise, as well as just overall efficiency of the vehicle. It's generally priced lower than a pure electric vehicle or a PHEV. So there's that. But if you're able to charge your vehicle close by, at home, well, a full electric vehicle makes a lot of sense. You don't have to pay for gas. And if you're kind of in the mix in the middle, a PHEV actually makes the most sense of them all. 
even though they do have that fundamental flaw. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you see, leave a like in the video itself. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be sure to read them. Take care. Have a great day.